Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Torah Gems. I'm Rob, your host. This week we're going to be discussing Bechukkatai and Behar, two portions this week. Generally, as a rule, um, I haven't named my commentaries, you know, like, like a, you'd have the commentary on the scripture and then you'd have a name for it. But if I had to name this week's, it would be entitled The Folly of Arguing About Identity. Scripture is very clear about God's intention about identity. Um, one of the struggles that I see in the Messianic movement right now is uh, a lot of people tend to have arguments over, you know, former Gentiles who've been purchased into the family of God, grafted in, as it were, about their arguments and, and, and our forefathers and what they did with that and how they took the, the rugby ball and ran with it, or the football or whatever, you know, and ran with it and, uh, you know, came up with, you know, evil man-made things like replacement theology, which is, of course, unbiblical, uh, to say the least. Uh, I don't want to get started ranting about that. I think a lot of us rant about it because maybe there's a little bit of uh, guilt in our blood. I'm, you know, just take this opportunity to repent for the sins of forefathers there to my brothers and sisters of Judah and Benjamin and physical Israel. You see, here um, in Leviticus, at the end of the chapter, he talks about the Jubilee year. He automatically ties that into redemption of the slaves. Now, it deals with redemption of the slaves and, and how nothing is permanent. And God tells his people, physical Israel, there that they were aliens and sojourners with, with him, and how they are to treat the alien and sojourner, or the ger toshav, those who would join themselves to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, and I find the interesting part of it is that there was an expectation of those people that they would be obedient to God's teaching and instruction. But you see, when we read through and we read chapter 26, it talks about the blessings of obedience, but then it talks about the curses of disobedience. And you see... As people, we have hearts that are automatically prone to disobedience to God. We are, we are wired to be in right standing with Him, but we also have that choice. And our evil hearts, our unredeemed hearts, oftentimes will make the choice for sin, which is, of course, chata, which is, of course, missing the mark. And what is the mark? Torah, God's teaching and instruction, guidance and deliverance for life. So, what we can see is, today... And, and, and this week, as I read this, I got this picture. Now, I don't want to get too charismaniac on you, praise God. But I, I got this picture in my mind. Now, it wasn't like, oh, a little picture in my mind. I just got an, I got an inspiration. And I saw this man sitting there in, you know, the third or second, second or third century, and he's reading this, and he goes, how could this Yeshua, who's been preached to me, be this God? And what it does is it creates that mind like, oh, it must be a different God. Well, you know, it's obviously not, because we know God is one, hero Israel, you know. So what, when we see these things, it's, it can be hard for us, you know, as believers and people who are growing, who've been purchased under, you know, under Yeshua and entered into the Abrahamic covenant. And we come to our Mosaic covenant, you know, uh, and we see that, that God is, is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that there are instructions, there are things that, that separate us from the world. We're not going to do it perfectly. And sometimes we're even going to break it willingly, you know. We ought to be in a process of circumcision of the heart, which is a process. I can tell you, when I first started walking in, in God's teaching and instruction, realized that the whole Bible was pertinent. I wasn't, you know, got, started to learn about what basic lessons there were, you know, about under the law and those kinds of things, you know, since then I've grown. And since then, I've sinned. I've made mistakes. I've made mistakes that, that blew my mind. And every time I do, I come to this point, I'm like, wait a second, you know, and it's, it's horrific, you know, and, 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 and we grow. So getting back to my point, this week it's talking about redemption and kinsman redeemers, okay? Yeshua was a kinsman redeemer. How do we know that? To the Jew first, then to the Gentile, okay? But the Gentiles don't stay Gentiles. I mean, it's all through the Torah, okay? A Gentile doesn't stay a Gentile because a Gentile means that he's pagan, confused, and without God. I'm not pagan. I'm not confused, praise God. And I'm not without God. So I'm no longer a Gentile. I'm part of Israel in the sense that I stand with Israel. I love the Torah of Israel. 
I follow and, and as, as best that the Holy Spirit will allow me to do in my understanding the teaching and instruction of God um, and, and His guidance and deliverance and I'm obedient to that. And I do these things. I fall along the way and I pick myself, I dust myself off and I keep going when I make mistakes. And you know the funny thing is that's a very Torah concept when they teach you in the church. Oh, you know, guy goes to pastor, says, oh, praise God. I just, I'm having a hard time with this sin. You know, I came out of addiction years ago and that was one of those things. And how come I keep doing this? And we don't understand how to apply Torah in our lives. So we don't understand how to purge the sin out of our lives. And when it comes back, we don't understand the concept that there's still something there that needs to be washed clean of. So we see here, what I see in this, in this portion this week is that God, God's plan of redemption is to purchase us out of the world system, of course, and redeem us, okay? So when we are as former Gentiles or aliens and sojourners possessing of Yeshua HaMashiach, the, the, the Messiah of Israel, and we're grafted into the olive tree that is Israel, then we ought to give back to that olive tree, that price, okay? And what, we, what we're doing is, is that is what provokes our brothers and sisters who don't have their Messiah to jealousy. It pains me often to watch when people teach different kinds of theologies and doctrines. I think in the Messianic movement we spend an awful lot of time arguing about silly things. The scriptures are very clear. My commentaries are never really designed to teach anything. If you get something out of them, praise God, I'm glad that you do. And my heart is to see people inspired to look into their Bibles, okay? Because this is where God speaks. We don't need to lay on the floor with soaking music to hear God speak. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You want to hear God speak into your life, read his teaching and instruction, Genesis to um, Revelation. I would say most of us in the Messianic movement have that ingrained in our spirit. I have hidden your word in my heart so I may not sin against you. This is the whole point of what we do. And we have to remember, when we want to point our fingers at other individuals, we need to remember where we came from. We need to remember we were but aliens and sojourners with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that we were bought with a price. Previously last week, we saw that price. We saw that time for a bride without spot or wrinkle, okay? And that there are preparations that the bride makes for ourselves. We're the bride. We have preparations that we should be making. But not only that, that Paul, we take Paul oftentimes in the past, uh, there have been forefathers who have taken Paul and used him to do away with the teaching and instruction of God. And they do that because they read those, those parts well, that can't be God. How could he be saying this? He's going to do all these horrible things. We do it. It's not him. It's us. By our own decision, by our own machination, and by our own oaths and things that we take part in, we're the ones that bring the garbage into our lives. Um, a wise friend of mine once said, you're under a covering, or a chuppah, okay? To lead that, that covering is Yeshua. It's God himself, okay? If, if you want to step out from under that um that covering, there's a storm falling, and it isn't water, it's poop, and you're going to get it on you. And it take, there's a process involved with washing and getting it out, ritual application of the Torah. We were, so we see, uh, we know that in Hebraic thought that, you know, the land, the people, and the scriptures are synonymous. So we see that that redemption, okay, we see that redeeming those who are uh, in debt or in slavery and those kinds of things, and we were in debt. We owed we a great debt out of slavery, okay? We ought to treat each other, love one another, and land the people. This week, we see, you know, that there are, there's both sides of the story, okay? And that two are going to become one. Ezekiel 37, there's there's two groups Those, in the Bible, okay? There's not a church or ecclesia that's different than the congregation of Israel, okay? And that we know that the house of Judah and the house of Israel will be joined together in the last days. And we are seeing that happening in unprecedented praise. We were be to Yedhevav Hey for his teaching and instruction, guidance and deliverance for life, and his redeeming power and what he's doing in the earth today. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.